The book of Psalms, Psalm 100. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not our, we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, and uh, hopefully everyone is here uh, entering into your house with thanksgiving, glad that they came into the house of the Lord, glad for the blessings that you have given us, not only this day, but every day, and uh, uh, whatever happens tomorrow, we know that you're, it, it, our day will be filled with blessings from you. We know that all your gifts are good, Lord. We thank you for that. We uh, praise you and we trust you as well. We would ask tonight that you would uh, just uh, continue to bless, that you would enable me to preach. Forgive me of my sins and my shortcomings and all the ways that I fall short of what I should be and just enable me to preach this sermon. We would ask if someone hears these words tonight, Lord, that they would... Uh, it would cause them that you would uh, take these words and, and uh, uh, cause them to trust you, Lord, that they would uh, trust in, in, and believe in your son, that they might have eternal life. Uh, make our hearts right. Give us a right spirit at this time. All these things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 I'd like to preach tonight praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving. Uh, I believe those two go hand in hand. I don't believe you can have true praise without thanksgiving. And I don't think you can have thanksgiving without praise. Uh, they're inseparable. Uh, the psalmist here writes about praising the Lord, being thankful, uh, how to come into his presence, how, how uh, um, uh, we should behave. Uh, um, we, we, we think of his presence, we come into his presence, we, we think of that a lot of times as coming into the Lord's house, but his presence is wherever we are. Uh, we should be praising him, him at home, we should be pr praising him in our work and in our school, in all that we do, wherever we go, we should be praising him. Now, how should we enter is the first question. I'd like to ask today, how should we enter? It says here in our, in our scripture, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence. Know ye that the Lord is God, that he hath made us and not ourselves, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Probably should have stopped at the second verse there. We'll get into the others in just a little bit, but how should we enter? When we come into his presence and we gather here and uh, uh, we do consider this a special time, even though I said his presence is wherever we are, uh, where, wherever we go, he's already there. We understand that when we come together for corporate worship, there is a special blessing. When we gather together in his house, when we gather together with his people, when we gather together and we sing these songs of praise, when we, when we pray together, when we unburden our hearts together, when we uh, uh, listen to the word of God expounded on together, I believe it is a special place. How should we enter into this place? Now, a lot of these things that I'm about to say, that I'm going to plan it on saying tonight, unless the Lord stays my lips, people will say, what kind of a Baptist is he? What kind of a Baptist is he? The, the, the things that, that Baptists don't do these things. Well, how should we enter into his presence? How should we enter when we, we come into his house? How should we enter when we gather together with corporate worship? 
It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I believe we should come with joyful shouting. Now, understand this. Paul said that all things should be done decently and in order. I believe it wouldn't hurt us to be a little bit more vocal and a little bit more animated in our worship, but at the same time, it should be decently in order. The difference between, I believe, what the, the, the Bible talks about with, the, with, with praising him and getting excited about the things of God and what is practiced in a lot of churches nowadays, it's not done decently and it's not done in order. We should come with joyful shouting. It says make a joyful noise. There's nothing wrong with an amen. There's nothing wrong with a hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with, with vocalizing our praise. As long as we're doing it in praise and not to draw attention to ourselves and not as a distraction and uh, 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 not as uh, anything that would divert from the worship of the Lord. It says we should make a joyful noise. I, I believe we should have joyful shouting. I believe that we should come into his presence with jubilant service. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Now I mentioned this morning, you know, uh, that we should not drag into here like it's drudgery. We shouldn't drag in here like it's a job, like it's a duty, like it's a uh, uh, something that is odious to us. We should come and we should serve the Lord with gladness. We should go out and serve the Lord with gladness. We sing that song sometimes, take the name of Jesus with you. Now a lot of times we don't do a lot of serving here in the, in the house of God. We, uh, uh, we, we gather and we sit, uh, but we're serving the Lord with our, our singing. We'll get into that in just a second. We serve the Lord with our giving. When we give of tithes, we serve the Lord with our, 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 our praying to him. We serve the Lord in our praising him. We refer to the services as services, do we not? Are we serving him when we gather together? Not only are we serving him, there's a way we should serve him. We should serve him with gladness. We should enter into his presence with joyous singing. It says, come before his presence with singing. There is nothing like the singing of the saints of God. There, there is nothing better than the singings of the, uh, of the saints of God. Now, many people are self-conscious about singing. Many people say, well, I don't have a good voice. There is nowhere in the Bible, if I'm wrong, someone correct me and show me later on, where it says sing good. There's no command to have a good voice. There's only a command for everything that has a voice to praise Him. If you've got a voice, you should praise him. The psalm should be a song of your heart. It's good because it's joyous. I would much rather 
Here's someone who has difficulty holding a tune and singing from the heart and singing with joy. Then someone who has a naturally beautiful voice and they know it. My old pastor used to talk, there was a cartoon that he saw. It said, you know, the, 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 this person singing, um, and basically what the singer was saying was, he was telling somebody, or, or, this song I'm about to sing really isn't overly scriptural or spiritual, but it really accentuates my voice. That's not a right spirit. That is not joyous singing. We should enter into his presence with a justly thankful spirit. It says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We come together to praise God. Remember what I started out with? I said that you can't have praise with thanks, without thanksgiving. Not only should we be thankful, we should be justly thankful. We have every reason to be thankful. We have this church. We should be thankful. We have the Spirit of God. We should be thankful. We have not only the Bible, we have the King James Bible. God didn't just give us a Bible. He gave us a Bible in our language that is inerrant. That there are no mistakes. There are no flaws. There are no faults in his word. The authorized version of the Bible. Not only should we enter with joyful shouting, jubilant service, joyous singing, and a justly thankful spirit. The next question I'd like to put before us is who are we engaging? Now sometimes we will sometimes we will say brother so and so's church. Where do you go? Oh I go to brother Duncan's church. I go to, to uh, Brother Jones's church. I go to Brother, or we'll even say it, you know, about my mother's church. Or, and and we, we do that to describe what church it is. But ultimately, we know, or we should know, that this is the Lord's church. Amen. We are engaging the Lord. We often quote the verse where two or three are gathered, Jesus is present. We look at the book of Revelation and it talks about how the Lord is walking in the midst of his churches. We come together to meet with him and maybe hope that Brother Duncan doesn't mess it up. That we don't quench the spirit. What an honor that is. Once again, we, we shouldn't come in here like it's some sort of drudgery. We look at people that forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's not just the assembling of ourselves, it is meeting with the Lord. They have these events from time to time where you can meet a famous person. People will line up. People will pay money. Will pay money to meet a famous person. Get their picture taken with them. 
get their autograph. I remember uh, years ago when I was still working in Ohio, I was in Walmart up there getting my oil changed and they made this announcement. Attention, Walmart shoppers. Today we have with us Lou Brock. <laughs> and he's going to be signing autographs. You could get a Polaroid picture taken and he would sign it. And, and uh, if you were under a certain age, if you were a little kid, they would give you something and it was sponsored. I didn't have to pay for it at all. It was sponsored by Cracker Jack. He was on a promotion for Cracker Jack. Now, I can see how excited you kids are about the prospect of meeting Lou Brock. Lou Brock was one of my heroes when I was a kid. And uh, so I went and got in line. I wanted to meet Lou Brock, and I got there, and I got my picture taken with Lou Brock. Probably maybe three of us here know who Lou Brock is. I know Pi does because she knows I'm at him. <laughs> I can tell the, the guys in the back that know who Lou Brock is. I'm not so sure about uh, <coughs> these other two up here. But anyway, so I'm standing in line. Well, lo and behold, the woman that I work with is standing in line too. She's got her two little kids there, a little boy and a little girl. Her question to me was, who is this? All she knew was some guy was there. Apparently he was famous. They were... He was signing autographs, so she was in line. There were a lot of other women around me. Well, who is this, you know? I'm going to tell my husband I met this person, whoever he is. So I explained to this woman, she said, who is this? I said... He used to play for the St. Louis Cardinals. And she turns around and gets in her little boy's face and said, he used to play for the St. Louis Cardinals. And I said, he held the record for the most stolen bases. And she turns around and tells her little boy, he held the record for the most stolen bases. And she goes, but that's a good thing. It's okay to steal bases in baseball. That's not bad. And people were lining up to meet someone. They didn't even know who he was. Why can't we get them to line up and come into the presence of the Lord? I said they will pay money to see some people. I was, I was thinking we ought to advertise that uh, the first uh, 50 people that come in here does, don't have to pay admission. See if people would show up. People don't appreciate things that are free. Salvation is free. They don't appreciate it. Gathering together with the Lord's people is free. Unless it's, you know, Osteen and some of those guys charge ticket prices. But he's going to end up paying in the end, won't he? Who are we engaging? Well, according to verse 3 here, I've digressed long enough. He's our creator. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is God. It is he that hath made us. We are engaging God, God Almighty. He is our Lord. He created us. All things were created by Him and for Him. You, you want to know what the meaning of life is? You want to know what your purpose is? You were created by Him and for Him. Now, I just saved you a lot of time and money. You don't have to climb to the top of some mountain and ask some uh, 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 guru or something what the meaning of life is. A meaning of life is to serve Him. He is our Creator. He is our Redeemer. He says we, we, He made us and we are not ourselves. We are His people. 
We belong to him. He is our redeemer. We are bought with a price. He died that we might be his people. He is our kin kinsman. It says that we are his people. He not only saved us, he adopted us into his family. The Father is our Heavenly Father. Jesus is our joint heir. He is our keeper. It says we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We could refer to the shepherd's psalm, Psalm 23. He not only saves us, he keeps us. He watches over us. Every aspect of being his sheep means that he takes care of everything that we need. It starts out with, I shall not want. Meaning there's nothing that I have need for that he does not provide. He is our keeper. He saves us and he keeps us. He said in the book of John that we are in his father's hand. And then he says we are in his hand as well. We are his possession. Man, when, when we finally get that right, that we are his possession, that we belong to him, he has the right to do with us whatever he wants. I'm just thankful that I can trust him to do what's good for me. Amen. We are engaging God himself when we come into his presence. How are we to exalt him? I think we should exalt him visibly Sometimes you go into a church and people are slumped over and, and, and look bored and have a demeanor. What was it last week we preached, uh, why are you so sad, Jesus asked. Now I understand why they were sad. Amen. They didn't know Jesus had, was born again or raised again rather. We know that. We know that. It's already happened. We know that. We know that he's coming back. We know that he's watching over us. We know that he's protecting us. Now here's some strange things you'll hear that I told you you, you might revoke my Baptist card. Psalms 47, verse 1. Turn to 41, not 47. Psalms 47 says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. These people were praising the Lord vi uh, visibly and vigorously. Now, what's he mean when he says clap and shout? That's just a spontaneous clap. It's not applaud like we, you know, mm -hmm. like we, uh, we're at some concert or some play or something. Now, once again, this is to be done strictly spontaneously. This is not something, if it's in your heart, do it. You ever have somebody tell you something and it excites you and you just kind of clap your hands? That's what it's talking about. Psalm 63, 4, he said, I will lift up my hands unto the Lord.
Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. It's okay to raise your hand in praise to the Lord. Sometimes you'll go to some Baptist meeting and so the, 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 someone will get excited and they'll raise their hand like that and people will look at them like they got three heads. Second Samuel 6.14 now, now watch this. Hold on. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, before, before anybody drags me out of here, it says that David danced before the Lord. Yeah. Now, once again, you have to put this in the right context, though. If I'm preaching or, or, or somebody's singing or we're all singing corporately, don't get out in the aisle and start doing some crazy dance. The context was David had come back into Jerusalem. It's okay to physically praise him in the right context. If we're jitterbugging here in church, that's not the right context. If you're in the spirit and we're singing something and, and it causes you to sway a little bit, that, that's all right. If you're up here singing and God is emotionally dealing with you, it's okay to move around. We're to serve him visibly and vigorously, vocally. We talked about shouting in verse 1 and 47 verse 1 as well. We talked about singing and sermonizing. It's okay to get a little excited when you're preaching. There, there, there's no reason for us to be dry when, when we're preaching. I enjoy having a good time when I'm preaching because I enjoy who I'm preaching about. I enjoy being with you all. Now, we don't make a mockery of it, but it's okay to get excited when you're preaching. We've got every reason to be excited. And then we should exalt him with veracity. All those things that I talked about should never be fake. They should never be a put on. They should never be to draw attention to yourself. They're, they should never be to stir up and try to get people stirred up. We're not to be cheerleaders. We're just here to praise the Lord. You know, sometime, I guess it was in the 90s, they came up with this uh, term, praise team. Mm -hmm. Praise team. What are, that, that, that's a group of cheerleaders they put before a congregation trying to rev up some emotion like you would at a ball game. By the way, some people would shout at a ball game, clap at a ball game, get excited about a ball game, and then when they come to the Lord's house... They sit like a bump on the log. I think we're excited about the wrong things. And finally, why should we enjoy him? Verse 5. Verse 5, it says, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth is endureth to all generations. We should enjoy him. We should enjoy his presence because he is excellent. The Lord says he's good. Or the, the, the word says he's good. The Bible says he's good. The song says he's good all the time. God is good all the time. He is perfect in every way. 
He, he, he is good in his ways. He is good in, in his treatment to us. We should enjoy his presence because he is everlastingly merciful. Not only is he excellently good, he is everlastingly merciful. His mercy is forever. Why can I not lose my salvation? Because all of a sudden I'm sinless? I've reached sinless perfection? Now that, I, now that I, I'm saved, I never sin? No, it's because His mercy <coughs> endureth forever. He's having mercy on me. Constantly. Years ago, I was saved when I trusted the Lord. He has saved me every day since then. He has kept me every day. The only reason why I'm still saved is because His mercy endureth forever. And He's enduringly true. He says his, his truth endureth to all generations. That means that I can read something written thousands of years ago in the book of Psalms and it's still true today. Amen. I can still trust the word of God. I can't trust the news. You know, they, the, 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 you know, they talk about the, the, the fake news. The news has always been fake. The media has always twisted the news. I remember when I was in sixth grade reading a story about um, the Hearst family in yellow journalism. What was his name? Randolph Hearst, the big newspaper magnet. Mm -hmm. He used the power of his newspaper to stir up the people that we would go to war with Spain over the sinking of the Lusitania. He profited off that war. But we can trust the word of God. We can't trust our politicians. They will change their minds. They will lie to us. They will say whatever is necessary in order to get in office, and then they rationalize it by saying, well, I have to get in office in order to do good. The Word of God just tells us how it is. God doesn't worry about whether we like him or not. He tells us how it is. If it hurts your feelings, good. Change your feelings. Somebody told Billy Sunday uh, he needed to calm it down a little bit. He's rubbing the cat the wrong way. Billy Sunday said, well, the old cat needs to turn around. If the preaching of the Word of God rubs you the wrong way, you better turn around. His truth endureth forever. I know of churches that used to stand for the Word of God. I told you this morning, I'm glad a lot of them took the name Baptist off the door. But God's truth endureth forever. Did God change or did these churches change in their stance? Did they change in their attitudes? Did they change in their preaching? God does not, has not, and will not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. That's why we should praise Him. That's why we should have thanksgiving. That's why we should flock to gather together to praise and to worship Him. Would you stand? If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ as your Savior,